Have you ever wanted to turn the GNOME desktop environment into a tiling window manager? No, me neither, but some folks have created this new GNOME extension called the Pop Shell. The Pop Shell is being developed so it can be included in the upcoming release of Pop OS 2004. So I thought I would take a look at Pop Shell. So I pulled up the documentation for Pop Shell here. They are hosted over on GitHub. And reading a little bit of the documentation, you can see Pop Shell is a keyboard driven layer for the GNOME shell. It basically turns GNOME into a tiling window manager. Essentially, if you click on installation, it will get down to the installation instructions. Some important things you need to know if you want to try out Pop Shell right now. You have to be on GNOME 3.36. Most Linux distributions are not going to have GNOME 3.36 available in the repos. So you need to be on a very bleeding edge distribution like Arch. So I, I created a VM today of Arco Linux with the GNOME desktop environment. So I have GNOME Shell 3.36 in Arco GNOME. You also need to install TypeScript 3.8. The only other dependency you really need is Make, but Make should already be on pretty much every Linux distribution anyway. So let me pull up this VM of Arco Linux GNOME. And I have went ahead and installed the Pop Shell. And you see at the top, you now have this little widget here. It kind of has a tiling icon, if you will. And you can choose to tile the windows or not tile the windows. So you can turn the tiling functionality on or off. So you can switch between floating mode and tiling mode. You can also choose whether you want it to snap to grid. And if you click on appearance, you get some other things that you can change, such as whether it shows an active hint around the windows, you know, meaning it has a highlighted border around the active window. Most tiling window managers do that by default. But in a pop shell, you can turn that on or off, depending on what you want to do, and show window titles. In most tiling window managers, you don't want a title bar of your windows. It's just unnecessary space. It takes up too much of the screen. So typically, you want to have that turned off. And by default, they do have gaps in pop shell. You have a four pixel inner gap and a four pixel outer gap. So let's talk about some of the basic key bindings. The basic key bindings are kind of what you would expect. Directional keys are the Vim keys, H, J, K, L, or left, down, up, right, if you prefer using the arrows. Although, honestly, if you're going to take the time to learn a tiling window manager, HJKL makes a lot of sense if you're on a traditional QWERTY keyboard, just because those four keys are right there on your right hand as far as the home row and it, it makes things a lot easier actually than using those arrow keys so try to break your habit of using the arrow keys and switch over to using hjkl if you are attempting a tiling window manager it's worth it honestly super q closes the window with focus super m maximizes the focus window super comma minimizes the focus window that's very strange because typically in a tiling window manager you're not interested in ever minimizing a w window that's not really part of the workflow with a tiling window manager, it's unnecessary to even have the ability to minimize a window. That's strange that they include that. But I guess, you know, for people that are used to floating window managers and used to minimizing things, maybe they wanted to keep that functionality, but you would never use it. And they have something called window management mode, which is activated by doing super return mod key plus enter. And it gets you into a mode where you can move the windows around in the stack. So let me switch over to the VM of Arco GNOME and show you this in action. So Super T brings up a terminal here, at least on my system. And by default, this is probably going to be the GNOME terminal. I did not like the GNOME terminal, so since I was on Arco, I just quickly pulled down my ST build because I have my ST build in the AUR just so I could have my terminal with my proper key bindings and everything. So, you know, all my key bindings work, such as zooming in and out. So Super T brings up a terminal, Super Q closes the window with focus. So let me open up a few terminals so you can see the tiling behavior. So let me hide my head here so you can see what's going to go on here. By default, when you open one application, it opens full screen. That's the way every tiling window manager should do by default, and that's the way Pop Shell does. If I open a second one, we divide the screen in half. The new window is placed on the right hand side of the screen. Then let me open a third terminal. And now we get another window below the second window. 
Uh, it's not quite dividing the screen in half. You notice this is a little bigger than that window. That is a little strange until you see what it's trying to do here. If I open another one, you know, now it gives this window a little more space. It divides these into a smaller area. And if I keep on with the terminals and keep on, you see what it's doing. It's kind of a, uh, a Fibonacci layout and what some tiling window managers call a Fibonacci layout, but really it's almost a dwindle layout. For those of you familiar with the awesome window manager and the dwindle layout, you get this effect where each application you open is basically dwindling toward a corner of the screen. So let me super cue to close all these windows and put my head back. <laughs> So let me super T to open a terminal again, and I mentioned earlier that super comma minimizes. Now if I hit super comma, that window goes away, but I still have this highlighted area of the screen. I guess that is letting me know where the next window I open would be placed. For example, super F should open the file manager, but it doesn't open it full screen like it should. That's strange that it didn't do that. If I open a terminal, yeah, they're no longer tiled like they were before. That is weird. It says pop shell error, no fork entity found. Uh, again, it's this is not official software yet. It's kind of beta software, so I expect there to be bugs. But where was the terminal that I minimized? It's right here. Now, I don't typically use the GNOME desktop environment, so this is very strange to me. But this one is still tiled, and if I open you know, a file manager in it, yeah, it forces it into the tiling layout. Yeah, I don't know, once I minimized that first window, why everything I opened after that was kind of in a floating layout. That's kind of strange. So let me open up a few things here. So I'm going to open up, you know what, I'll open the terminal here. One thing I've noticed, because the mod key is going to be the super key. That's the key you hit all the time to basically do anything in your tiling window manager or in the pop shell in this case. Super also has the added functionality in GNOME when you hold super you know you or hit super you get your dash here where you can you know search for something but you hit it again it goes away but that does conflict because all your key bindings involve super I can tell you just playing around for half an hour or so in the pop shell I have many times gotten into this where all I was trying to do was do a key binding to launch an application or move an application or you know some other function other than getting to this so that is something that the pop shell guys may want to take a look at is maybe using a different mod key other than super just because it conflicts with that or even better could they disable super from launching this or maybe binding it to a better key binding other than just hey I tap super one time you know make me hit a more complicated key binding because it's too easy to accidentally activate that so let me launch htop here and then I'm gonna super f to launch the file browser then I could super b to actually launch our web browser and it forces it into the tiling layout now if I go back to the documentation they mentioned window management mode is activated by super return. Now what is that? Well, let's try it out. So if I do super enter, you see it now highlights the window with focus. And if I do J, which is the down key in Vim, nothing happens. But if I do K, which is the up key in Vim, it moves Firefox up. H to move to the left, L to move to the right, K to move up, J to move down. Of course, you could use the arrow keys. You could go up with the arrow key, down with the down arrow key. If I escape, I get out of that window management mode. That is interesting. I will say I expect really that to be a better key binding or that's really a key cord. I mean, I have to do super enter to enter this mode and then I have to actually do the key binding to move and then escape to get out of that. That's three key bindings where it really should just be one key binding. I should just be able to do something like super shift H and move it to the left, super shift L to move it to the right. That's kind of like the standard key bindings in most tiling window managers, but that's not what's going on here in the pop shell and that's annoying because what typically, again, takes a single key binding, actually takes three strokes here in the pop shell, that would be something to, that would actually prevent me from ever using something like that. that that's, they got to get that down to just one key binding.
So it looks like there is a built-in launcher here in Pop Shell. The launcher is summoned with Super Plus Slash. So let's give that a try. So Super Slash gets you a launcher here. It looks kind of like any kind of run launcher, such as Rofi or Albert, or I'm not exactly sure what they're using or if this is something built into GNOME, but if I started typing something like Term, you know, I see that Quake is here. I see that Termite is installed on the system. URXVT is installed on the system, but I could arrow down to pick the terminal emulator I want. Uh, one thing I really should talk about because in the windows with focus have this highlighting let me show you this. So if I go to the little widget here and I go to appearance and I tell it quit showing active hints, let me turn that off and I'm going to open up, uh, we'll just open up a few terminals. Which terminal has focus? Well, because I have the title bar and the decoration, you can see that this one has focus because it's red. But if I didn't have the title bar, you'd have no idea what window has the, the focus. So you really want to turn on show active hints so you have a border around the window but the problem is they do much more than just have a border around the window here you see they actually change the color of the window there is like this orangish uh, hue to the window it changes the terminal from being really black which is what i set it to to like a dark orange why are you doing that just put a border around the window pop shell guys do not actually you know, change the color of the window itself. Oh my goodness. And that, that, that annoys me. I'm not going to lie. I have to leave it on though, because not having a hint around your active window is a no go. The other thing I've noticed is show window borders. I'm assuming that's the title bar, which is completely unnecessary and wasted space in a tiling window manager. You want the title bars to be gone. I'm assuming that to turn that off, show window titles. If I turn that off, it goes away but it doesn't. So I'm not sure if that's just a bug here with me playing around with this or, or what's the deal with that, but I can't get rid of the title bars. And just quickly looking at the documentation, hiding window title bars, because I really need to figure this out. It says windows with server side decorations may have their title bars completely hidden. So I guess it's only going to work for certain applications and not for others. Again, that, that's, that's a major deal breaker. Anybody that actually wanted to use a tiling window manager, they would have a problem with this unnecessary space. Um, the title bars need to be just completely eliminated from all programs. Looking at the documentation, it looks like Super and G uh, it's supposed to put something in floating mode. I don't know, is it in floating mode or isn't it? It's hard to tell. I'm assuming I could always just grab something and drag it but I, I don't know. How do I get it back? Okay, so Super G does toggle on and off floating. So right now it would be in floating mode. I could just drag it, but Super G forces it back into the tiling layout. Okay, I get that. Let me Super Q to close all of this. Anyway, again, it's, it's beta software. There's really not that much functionality built into it, at least not yet. I'm sure they're going to keep adding stuff to it. I think the question is, should you guys, especially you guys that have never used a tiling window manager, should you guys check out Pop Shell once it's actually released here in a couple of months? In my opinion, no. Uh, it does not make sense to do something like this because, quite frankly, the whole idea about using a tiling window manager is... The Unix philosophy, a tiling window manager really should just be a window manager. It shouldn't have all this extra cruft that is built into GNOME. Um, you don't need the dash and all the widgets and, you know, the panel and whatever background services are running inside GNOME. You don't need all that stuff. If you need it, you install third party programs of your choosing. That's kind of the point of these minimal window managers like i3, Awesome, Xmonad, Qtile, is that you know, it's the Unix philosophy. They're just window managers. They have one purpose, just window management. That's it. If you want a network manager or clipboard manager or volume control, any kind of panel, a sys tray, a doc, whatever it is you want to do to it, uh, you need to add third party programs that specifically focus on those tasks because the window manager is simply going to focus on window management. So I, I don't think too many people 
I don't think the people that are interested in running a tiling window manager would be interested in running something like the pop shell. For one thing, it's way too bloated. You have to have GNOME on your system. So you're talking about, you know, uh, hundreds of packages on your system. So you can run GNOME just so you can run the pop shell extension on top of GNOME. Also, you have to have TypeScript on your system. That's more packages that you typically would have to install because most of you are not already going to have TypeScript on your system either. It's really just a lot of bloat. What I would do if you're serious about learning a tiling window manager, some good ones to start with. You guys know the other day I recommended any of you guys interested in learning a tiling window manager, install awesome. So if you're on Debian or Ubuntu, sudo apt install awesome. Log out of GNOME or whatever desktop you're in. Log into awesome. It has a panel. It has a menu. And it has a lot of built-in functionality uh, that pop shell just doesn't have. Install a proper tiling window manager because the pop shell doesn't do even 2% of what you can do with something like awesome or i3 or xmonet or qtile. I mean, it's like alpha quality software at best. And even once they get this thing fleshed out, the fact that it's built on top of GNOME seriously limits this thing. You're never going to get where you want to be using something like the pop shell. Again, install a proper tiling window manager if you want to use a tiling window manager. Now, before I go, I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie, the producers of the show. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I want to sincerely thank these guys. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen here. They are all my supporters over on Patreon. Without those guys, this channel wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.